Hello, my name is Ava and I'm 29 years old. I always believed that my relationship with my mother-in-law, Felicity, was solid. From the moment I met her, she greeted me with a warm smile and I... I thought she genuinely cared for me. Well, did I know. Behind that facade of kindness, Felicity was brewing a sinister plan to drive a wedge between my husband, Michael, and me. Felicity called Michael every day while I was at work. At first, I didn't think much of it. After all, it was natural for a mother and son to stay in touch. But as time went on, I noticed a change in and Michael's demeanor. He became distant, and sometimes he was just downright hateful towards me. I was obviously confused by this behavior, and so I confronted him one evening when we were alone. Michael, is everything right? You seem different lately. Oh, I'm fine, Ava. Just leave me alone. That's what you want to do anyway, right? Oh, what, uh, what are you talking about? Um... Just answer me this. Do you want to take all of my money and leave me? I was obviously shocked by his outlandish allegation. I was even offended. How could you accuse me of something so diabolical? Where are you even getting your information? Have you lost your mind? I would never do something so horrid to you. Seeing my frustration and confusion, Michael sighed heavily. He sat down and put his head in his hands. He looked like he was clearly going through something. I'm so sorry I lashed out at you, Eva. It's just that, well, something has been going on, and it's been messing with my head. You said it was going on, babe. You know that we can get through anything as long as we, uh, we work together. I know, baby, which is why I think it's time I come clean, even though it's hard. Um... Okay, I'm listening. Ava, I don't know how to say this, but my mom has been saying things about you. Uh, really what things. Unfortunately, babe, they haven't been the nicest of things. It's really hard for me to say it. I... I know you love her, but you need to know that she's been bad-mouthing you on her calls. Fictions, I was taken aback. How could Felicity, the woman I consider the second mother, be saying negative things about me, stupidly. At the time, I didn't believe what my husband was telling me and I be- But to doubt him and his words. Babe, um, are you sure- are you not just misinterpreting what she's saying? If you know, as women, that there are certain things that we get that you guys simply don't. Maybe it's just a communication breakdown. I know, as women, there are certain things that we get that guys simply don't, uh, maybe it's just a communication breakdown. He starts another babe, I'm not stupid, I know when someone is speaking ill of someone else. This is some nuanced situation. The situation is pretty black and white from where I'm standing, my mother simply despises you. How could you say that to me? Just earlier this week, Felicity and I spoke on the phone. And she asked me about you. I told her all about how we're doing well, and I told her of our plans to start. That business we've always dreamed about. It's funny because she told me today that you were planning on sabotaging our business plans so that everything would be under your name. And then you eventually run away with all the money. Huh? That's crazy. That's start with me, babe. I'm not... I'm not stupid. I know when someone is speaking ill of someone else. There's... I know... I think Tom's are like... And you know, I know... And she said she's... We've been saying all... She's been saying all sorts of crazy things. And I hate to admit it, but it started getting... I started believing her. Um... Even though there's no solid proof, I started believing her words. Oh. And that's why I lashed out at you earlier. I'm so sorry. Um, As she didn't say those things, did she? She seemed to be adamant and not believing me, so let's do this instead. How about the next time she calls me? I will secretly add you onto the call.
so that you can listen in on every word that she says. Well, I'll host a Zoom meeting conference call with you on my computer, and when she calls me, I'll put the phone on speaker so that you hear everything. Fine, that sounds like a plan. I'll prove to you that uh, Felicity doesn't speak about me that way. Um. Well, folks, I hate to admit it, but it turns out that my husband was right. The very next day, as I left for work, and Michael was at home enjoying his downtime, he received a call from his mother. He did as was planned and added me on a conference call, whilst he answered the phone from his mother, so I was silently listening in on everything, unbeknownst to her, and I found out some very appalling information. Hello, my dear. How was your day? Um, it was fine, Mom. How was yours? But it was not good, Mike. I was too busy stressing and worrying about you and your predicament. A predicament? But the fact that you're married to a wicked woman. She doesn't love you. Michael, when are you gonna understand that? How much more information do I have to feed you? As your mother, these things impact me as well, you know. The longer you stay with that woman, the more... Years are removed from my life due to stress. Mom, please stop. I told you that I haven't been finding any evidence of that occurring, so please stop with your allegations. So, you're calling me a liar. You don't want to heed these wise words? I want you. I, I, what I... I'm just telling you the truth. She hates you. She's going to take all of your money and leave you if you're not careful. Let me call you back, okay? Love you. But wait, let me tell you more. Miko hung up the phone and unmuted me from the conference call. Hello, Ava. How could she talk about me like that? Has she lost her mind? That's unfortunate, I know. It's, it's a lot. I'm, I'm sorry, you had to find out this way. But you needed to hear the truth for yourself. Well... I, I have no words. Honestly, she sounded like a completely different person. Nothing like those sweet lady who checks up on me from time to time. Oh, sir, and now, now I know that she's only checking in to, uh, to gather and tell and twist it so that you believe her lies. My heart sank as I realized the depth of Felicity's deceit. The person I thought was my ally, my supporter, was working against me. I longer believed her words after our conversation the, the previous night. Omen is crazy. I almost got caught in her lies, and I trusted and believed her. I get you, babe. I'm sure that realizing her lies and deception wasn't easy, seeing as you're her son and all. Um... I'm more angry. If anything, I don't know what she's trying to get at by speaking ill of you so harshly and so often. But, but at least you know for yourself that, um, this is happening. Or she's lost it. Yet we need to confront her about everything. Yes, of course, but not just yet. What do you mean? Um... I'd like to listen in on more phone calls, please. Eichel was surprised at this request. He thought that we could just confront her after this one conversation. But I knew anything about master manipulators, it's that they severely enjoy toying with people's memories and rationality. Etchen, if we confronted her so soon, she could potentially try and gaslight us into believing that we took her words out of context. As much as it hurt to hear her awful words and accusations, I needed to gather more information and I needed to record it so that I had concrete and sufficient evidence of her degrading me in my arsenal for when I finally approached her. Is the next day, the same thing would happen. Michael would add me onto the call as planned, and this would be repeated and repeated for approximately two more weeks. Tup. 
Atari, I would join the call. Concealed and Felicity, unaware of my presence, began her usual routine of belittling and falsely accusing me. Much as much as I was getting used to her lies and deception, I was still somehow astonished at the many ways that she was able to twist innocent moments we shared in the past into something negative. Beating me as the villain and attacking my character, just with each phone call and secret conference call, the anger and determination to seek revenge grew within me. I knew that Felicity's actions needed to be exposed, not just for myself, but also to protect other innocent individuals who might fall prey to her manipulations. These recorded conversations were no longer only for my benefit, but for the benefit of all who needed it. They be pieces of a puzzle that would unveil Felicity's true nature eventually. Perhaps as I prepared to face Felicity head on, I knew that the road ahead wouldn't be easy. Confronting a family member, especially one who had deceived us, was certainly not going to be easy, but I was just grateful that Michael would support and comfort me after those horrid lies she would spew. One evening, Michael and I sat in our living room, devising a plan on how we would approach this. Just as we were about to talk about our strategy, the shrill sound of my phone interrupted us. It was city calling and she was calling me it must have been one of her occasional check-ins but after finding out what I found out I was ready to pounce on her then and there be something that uh oh wait bait it means I know you want to do this now but maybe we're better off holding off off for a second do it what why just um well for starters we don't know why she's calling she might be calling to come clean for all we know please at least hear her out and if this call ends without her coming clean and apologizing then we'll get that vengeance in any way you see fit no questions asked but she's still my mom babe i don't know i guess i guess part of me is uh, hoping that she's come to her senses and that she'll change, I just need to know for sure. Seeing Michael saddened by his mother's actions cut me deep to the core. I didn't take the time to properly address how this might be affecting him as well. I was so stuck in my own emotions, but... I didn't consider him. Finding out that your mother is a terrible person is certainly a heavy burden to carry, so I felt like I had to at least try. Being a terrible person is certainly a heavy burden to carry, so I felt like I had to at least try and be civil during this phone call, just to satisfy this curiosity he had. And I won't confront her about it just yet. How'd it go? I sighed and I answered the call. My voice was guarded but firm. Hello? Hello, my dear. How are you? I knew the truth by now, and it took all my strength to respond without lashing out. I'm fine, Felicity. How are you? As much as we weren't ready to confront her with the truth just yet, I couldn't help but drop subtle hints. I wanted to toy with her ever so slightly, um, so that she knew something was up and that her deceit was coming to light. Oh, darling, are you sure you're fine? You sound so angry. I suppose I'm a bit angry, Felicity. You see, I've, un I've uncovered some uh, shocking news recently. Um, well, it turns out there's somebody, um, some, but he's been, uh, so any my name. Someone has been slandering my name. Oh, that's very interesting. Yes, it's very interesting indeed. Um, and this person is doing it for no apparent reason, just trying to uh, tarnish my name and my image. Maybe they're jealous of me or something. Oh dear, 
How awful. Also, Felicity, have you ever met a person like that so cruel for no reason? Mm, I think we need to continue this conversation tomorrow, dear. I'm so sorry, but I've just gotten really tired out of nowhere. I'm so sorry, please excuse me. Let's talk tomorrow. But before I could even respond, she hung up the phone. Not five seconds later, Michael got a notification on his phone. It was a text from Felicity. It read, Bought another update on your slimy wife. Someone has been talking about her. Turns out I'm not the only person who thinks she's garbage. I'm telling you, get out of there while you still can. You tomorrow while she's at work to tell you the full story. Michael and I were sufficiently disappointed and shocked that she would continue to lie like this. Etchel was visibly upset. This appeared to be the final nail in the coffin. I'm sure that his hearing how fake she was with me just dispelled his doubts and confirmed what he knew deep down all along. They need to take her down. How can she be so two-faced? She probably went to bed so that she could make up a story about me to tell you tomorrow. She's sick. I don't care that she's my mother. She's in the wrong and she needs to pay for hurting you and me. Um... Although this terrible circumstance sought to destroy us, ironically enough, Michael and I bonded over this strange and hurtful situation. Our love for each other had strengthened and we spent the rest of the night comforting each other. The next day came around and my goodness it was certainly one to behold. I went to work as usual, but this time with a pep in my step, knowing what was about to go down later on. I was ready to tit this lady down. But this lady down. Michael called me eventually, and I knew that it was go time. As usual, he added me to the conference call while his mother was on a regular phone call with him. She didn't hesitate to st- accepts to D-E-E-L, gossiping about me once they said their pleasantries. She said that people all around her are talking about her and her schemes. Oh really? Is that how you recall our conversation from last night? Because I don't remember saying or doing any of those X things at all. The Solicity appeared to have choked on whatever beverage she was drinking. She wasn't expecting to hear my voice. She must have thought that she was going crazy. Don't worry, Felicity, you're imagining things. I'm here on a conference call with Michael. I've been listening in on your conversations for the past two weeks now. But I believe that I haven't properly given you my salutations, so hi, Felicity. Although this terrible circumstance sought to destroy us, ironically enough, Michael and I bonded over this strange the hurtful situation our love for each other had strengthened and we spent the rest of the night comforting each other Eva, whatever you heard I can assure you that you didn't hear it correctly let me explain oh please don't insult my intelligence Felicity the trade is over and know the games you've been playing the lies you've been feeding Michael but guess what we're done being your pawns I can't believe that you'd be so cool and manipulative for no reason, Matt. What drove you to do such a terrible thing? Oh, so you think you're better than me now, Michael? You think that you're Superman or something trying to save the day? I didn't do anything wrong. I was just telling you some hypothetical situations. It's not my fault that you two misconstrued everything. You're so pathetic. Even after being caught, you try to cover your tracks so sloppily. Not to worry, because I've I've recorded everything that you've said, so let me jog your memory a bit. 
I proceeded to play some of the audio recordings I took throughout the weeks. Recalling those cruel moments sent chills down my spine, but I was sure that Felicity was sweating bullets. She kept stammering and trying to speak over the recordings, again trying to cover her tracks. But she did such a terrible job of defending herself, especially with the irrefutable evidence that was presented. Finally, once she understood that the jig was up, she came clean. Well, well, guess what, Ava? I don't care that you found out the truth. So what? What are you gonna do? We all know that you're bad for my son. I'm for him. A in what way exactly? I don't know. You're hiding something. I can feel it. Even though I didn't get any evidence, I can just tell that you're a slimy and you're bad for my son. I'm gonna expose you for just how evil you truly are, you old wench. How dare you? Once I tell everyone in the family about this, they're going to be on my side. Not yours. Nobody's going to believe an outsider like you, Ava. See, you're wrong again, Felicity, because what you failed to realize, even after I told you earlier in the call, is that I'm recording this conversation, too. What? Yep, when will you learn? Not only are we recording this conversation, but we also recorded the conversation you had with ABA last night. And we took screenshots of the text you sent me. You're going down, Ma. I hate to admit... Gush, um, that I've got an evil wish for mother, but I'm, like, tired of making excuses for you and hoping that you change. Baby Ava, let's talk about this. This information doesn't need to go anywhere. Look, I'll apologize, all right. Just delete those recordings. Save it, Felicity. Your attempts at cleaning up your very damning mess are sloppy at best, have you no shame or dignity. It's far too late to try and smooth things over now, especially only after you Akat, who knows how long you would have tried to keep this up if we didn't confront you about it today. And you said that was say... We're going to tell everyone about this, and there's nothing you can do about it. And if I didn't make it clear enough, I no longer want to be in contact with you. I am in contact with you, Mom. I'm sorry, but I can't afford to be around your negative energy anymore as was dutifully promised and mentioned in the call. Michael and I exposed Felicity on various family group chats, warning our cousins, aunties, and uncles of her manipulative tactics. Out of fear and embarrassment, she would leave the family groups, but we would add her back so that she would... It's the music. Everyone in the group chats was certainly disappointed and appalled at her crude and childish behavior. Everyone in the group chats unanimously agreed that she needed to be dealt with by being excommunicated, at least for a brief time so that she could truly work on some character development. She would call Michael and me, begging us to stop exposing her as her character was being tarnished and decimated completely, but we would not relent. We would always remind her that she made her bed, and now she had to lay in it. After exposing her, a sense of satisfaction washed is over me. Felicity's power over us had finally diminished, and we were taking back control of our lives. I bet she won't try and do that to anyone ever again. 